as I notified that I would be happy to have three volunteer students who come over here and present your team of output. Maybe uh, you can volunteer or your friends can recommend, recommend him or her to be here and present. Anybody? Three, just only three students. So it could be AA, uh, summary, paraphrase, or AB, uh, AB summary, translation. Any brave heart? <laughs> <laughs> who is brave enough to, never mind, you're making mistakes, I don't want to be perfect. This is a chance just to practice. And she got the point. That is a topic. So what makes uh, their life a prospect gloomy? Because most of the to-be-born babies will be born in the less developed countries. So why? Because they are less likely to receive the proper education. And that means that their, their life First, they will have less choice for their life. So the world will no longer be safe enough and prosperous enough and healthy enough if the world, uh, the world population, the most of the new world population comes from less fortunate countries. So that was the topic, main message of this uh, text. Okay, so. Uh, I'm going to look at your handout, even if you missed the chance to present it. Don't worry, I will be looking at your handout uh, output here. So, uh, let's move on to our, our theory, uh, theory part of our uh, class. We will continue with this one. So, we're talking about the video translation is here. So, do you remember? <clears throat> so, this is the example that our translation should be too sound Korean. It shouldn't sound too local. For example, if we use dog, <coughs> this is rice cake. So the internet student, maybe international audience, they don't know. Uh, no, Korean, Korean, this is dog. Dog means sounds too Korean. So if you are a Korean reader, say, wow, dog, this sounds too local. So, and the chang, chang is a traditional Korean bean paste, so it is, sounds too local. So there is a problem. So, you, uh, so yes, it's important to make it fluent, but there is a limit to make it uh, fluent. And also we should also consider the culture. So for example, there is uh, in the Bible, there is bread and wine. 떡과 포도주, 그렇죠? 빵과 포도주죠? Bread and wine. Uh, and the 빵과 포도주, that itself has a message. So we cannot change it. 떡과 막걸리, 바꿀 수 없어요. We cannot translate it. So, 지게, in the 십자가, in the cross, so we cannot translate it as 지게. That is traditional instrument for Korean farmers to use. To use. So this brings us back to the main topic of our class, uh, main topic, textile reliability. Ah, textile 아닙니다. I'm sorry. Text reliability. Uh, text 신뢰라는 문제예요. Because it is translator's choice between how foreign it can go or how fluent it can sound for the translation uh, to the target language audiences. So we keep, uh, I'm repeat again, that's a choice between the two end of this scale on the literal <coughs> on the literal end of the scale that is foreignism. Igukwa. Igukwa. Would you say foreignism? Igukwa in Korean. And also the fluency, Chagukwa. In another word, the domestication. So so this is the extreme end of Igukwa and this is the extreme end of Chagukwa. So your cho choice maybe um, in between. <clears throat> so what is the effect of the foreignism? Iguka, the translation reads fairly fluently, but it is a slightly of alien, uh, alien feeling, one can tell reading it, that is a translation, um, not an original work. Uh, foreignism. 
자국한데, 그죠? 어, there is a mistake is here. Anybody who fought it? Uh, anyway, I will correct it here. Here, you can use translation strategies if you choose foreignism as your text reliability. So let me take an example. You want your translation to sound foreign. So every Korean uh, reader know that, wow, this is not the original Korean text. This is English. This is a translation from English. Then you can use this, this translation strategies. 여러분 번역할 때 어, 한국 사람이 봤을 때 누구나 어, 이거 번역물이구나 조금 이거 영어 냄새 나는데 아, 이거 스페인 냄새 나는데 그런 냄새가 나도록 쓰는 그런 번역 전략이 있다는 소리예요 그래서 그걸 뭐라 그러냐 이국하라 그래 It sounds foreign It sounds alien 이란 뜻이야 어. 그래서 번역가는 때로는 이국화 어, 번역 냄새가 솔솔 나도록 번역을 해야 된다는 소리야. I'm repeating again in English. Sometimes translators should choose to make his translation to sound alien or to sound foreign. 그러면, if that is the choice of translation, what are the strategies they can use? 어, 그래서 만약에 이국화, 번역은 번역 냄새가 나야 된다 그렇게 결정을 했을 경우에 그렇다면 어떤 번역 전략을 쓸수 있느냐 이것이 바로 이 그램플이에요. 바로잉을 쓸수 있어요. 바로잉은 차용이에요. 그래서 you can just use the foreign language into Korean. 예를 들어 샴페인을 그냥 you can write it in Korean. 샴페인. 버스. 요즘에 this is a new <웃음> Borrowing word from English, we had extreme sport, da, extreme job, da, 이런 거 많이 쓰죠. 어, 요새 생겼어요. 어, it's a recent phenomenon. 그리고 컴퓨터, 태권도, 김치, 스시. This is a borrowing strategy. Then another strategy, if you want to make your translation a little foreign, that is 무사, 클락, 클락. 그래서 foreign words are literally translated into mother tongue 이에요 그러니까 예를 들어서 도착어에 없는 그 표현을 그대로 쓴 거예요 for example there are some english words that has no korean equivalence of the english words 에요 자 예를 들어 볼까요 자 이거예요 뜨거운 감자 이럴 경우에 그냥 hot potato를 we literally translate it hot potato 그 다음에 carrot and stick도 그냥 당근과 채취 그 다음에 white elephant는 뭐죠? 하얀 코끼리 what is the white elephant? it's a 감당하기 어려운 선물이에요 for example, let's imagine that your friend gave a present white elephant that is big, huge and this is for you. I bought it in Saudi Arabia for you. Then would you be happy with that? Uh, you'd like to throw it away. But your friend will be disappointed. So that is white elephant gift. 자, 이것은 how, 이것은 하얀 코끼리. If you translate it into 하얀 코끼리, you use the kalk strategy. 무사. Then let's consider what are the translation strategies you can use if you choose your translation to be closer to the fluency end of text reliability scale. <웃음> 그죠? 자, 그렇다면 여러분이 이 번역을 영어를 국어를 했어요. 그럼 국어를 했을 때 한국 독자들이 와, 이거 번역물 같지 않대. 번역 냄새 전혀 안 나네. 그 한국말처럼 술술 익혀지네. 그렇게 번역하려면 어떤 전략을 써야 되느냐 이런 거예요. They are talking about what strategy you can use if you choose your translation sounds fluently for the Korean reader. So what is the effect of the fluency on the TL audience? The translation is just so accessible. That means everybody can understand and readable. Every category can it, read it without any difficulty. For the target language reader, for example, in Korean reader, wow, this is so easy to read. So it's 
seems like original text. 아, 이거 한국 텍스트인가 보다. 라고 느낄 정도로 하는 게 that is the effect of fluency, fluency on the TL audience 라는 거예요. 그래서 it never makes the reader stop and reflect that this is in fact a translation. So if you translate it fluently, then Korean reader will read it and they never think about, wow, this sounds like a translated text. 그런 거 없다는 거. It's just to read as if it is a Korean text. 자, 그렇다면, this is conditions for fluency of a BA translation. For Koreans, it will be, it will be English, to Korea, English to Korean. 그죠? 그래서 자연스러운 영한 번역 조건. 그죠? I, I got it from our text, one of our reference book, the 이용성의 통번역 이야기에서. The first is the meaning should be clear. An expression is relevant to the context. That is, I would say you should build the equivalence at the pragmatic level. 그 다음에 keep it clear and concise. So, what is the, then, what are the BA translation strategies for fluency? There are three strategies, conversion, 지원, modulation, 변조, adaptation, 번안. So, what is the 지원? So, STL synthetic structure is changed to fit the target language uh, text syntax. Yeah. For example, if you translate from English to Korean, so this is oil price hike makes it traffic hike. So you, there are two options. One is 기름값 인상이 거리를 한가게 만들었다. So you can see this choice is faithful to the English syntax. English syntax is uh, SV, um, SVOC, SOVC. SVOC, the subject, verb, object, and this is uh, this uh, this is adverb that uh, describes the object here. So anyway, so this is faithful to the English syntax here. Why? This is English tend to use noun phrase here. Noun phrase come with oil price hike. That is a noun phrase here. Noun phrase itself becomes a subject here. 그러니까 다시 얘기하면 명사절이 주어가 되는 거예요. 명사 명사절이. 그러나, if you want to, if, if you are translate this English into Korean, you have another option. 기름값이 인상되어서 거리가 한산하다. You can see the sentence structure will change it. So that in Korea, more fluent. 자, 한국어로 바꿀 때는, 이럴 경우에는 noun phrase보다는 이 noun phrase를 SB sentence로 바꾸는 것이 더 자연스러워요. 기름값 인상은 나온 프레이즈입니다. 그러나 한국말에는 SB 센텐스에서 기름값이 인상되어서 이거 센텐스예요. As the oil price increased, so we can change it. the English syntax into Korean syntax예요. 영어의 문법 구조를 바꿔서 한국어 문법 구조를 바꿔놓는 거예요. 자 이게 SB 센텐스, 그죠? 자 이런 게 바로 취안이라는 거예요. 어, 원래 어, English syntax was changed to, um, to the Korean uh, syntax so that it can sound more fluent to Korean readers. 한국 독자가 듣기에 좀 자연스럽도록 영어의 그 synthetic 문법 구조를 한국의 적, 한국 문법 구조를 바꿔놓는 거 그게 바로 conversion입니다. 자 예를 들어 볼까요? Let's take an example of a translating documentation text예요. 자, 이 영어를 음, 로자 우주 플리스 리드. 음, so we have two options here. One option is to faithful to English syntax of SVOC예요. This is advanced technology. It's a subject, and the verb is couldn't have. Object is America, and the C is being disgraced. Uh, this is American syntax. 그래서 미국의 문, 영어의 문법 구조는 전형적으로 SOVC의 기본 문형입니다. 자, 그렇다면, if you translate into Korean, so you decided to be faithful to English syntax, this is the way that you can translate. 그죠? 어, 예진이가 한번 읽어볼까? 응, 음, 그죠? 어. So this is the case, this is the translation 
strategy to follow the English syntax here, but we have another choices here. 자, Baker, would you please read English? Um, advanced technology couldn't save America being disgraced in Vietnam. 음, 그쵸. 그 다음에 민기, would you please read the Korean translation? 미국은 첨단 기술 공학으로도 베트남에서 선물이 면할 수 없어. 음, 그쵸. This is the example of you use conversion as a strategy to sound it more fluent in Korean language. 그죠? 한국어를 좀더 자연스럽게 들리기 위해서는 이렇게 할 수도 있는 거예요. 그래서 you can change the subject. 저, 미국은, 그죠? 목적어가 조가 됐어요. The object of English sentence become the subject of a Korean translation. Object, subject 바꿔버렸어요. 그 다음 미국은 첨단 기술 공학으로도 그죠? Advanced Technology, the subject가 무엇으로도 이렇게 바꿔버렸어요. 그리고 수모를 면할 수 없었다. 자, 보호를 아주 좋으로 만들어버렸어요. This is the example of you change the English syntax in a way so that it can fit into the Korean syntax. 자, 그렇다면 I have a question. So you have two options here. One is to face full to English syntax. Another is to just do your um, change it. You can use the conversion. So which is better? Mm, you should be always faithful to English text or you can change it. You can use the conversion. Mm? Which is better? It depends on the text. For example, if that is literature, novel, a literature translation, if you try to translate a novel, 소설, play 라면, they recommend, hmm? they recommend uh, oh, this one. It sounds a little foreign, but if you're translating the English novel and play and literature words, this one is better, they would say. Hmm. The uh, translation uh, on the the professors, they recommend, it depends on the text type. If you are translating this one, the, this one is, this one tends to be better. Then how about if you are translating the video text documentation, then it obviously should this one. Uh, if, if you translate the movie title, documentation, so there is a limit in time and sp speed, and there is a limit in the space and the time, then you should you should make it sound fluent. 그렇다면 어떤 경우에는 conversion 쓰고 어떤 경우에는 이국화를 해야 되느냐 그건 그 텍스트 타입에 달려 있다는 거예요. 여러분 소설 희곡 문학 작품 할 때는 다소 이국적으로 들린다 할지라도 일단은 영어 문법 구조에 충실하게 번역하는 것이 좋다고들 일반적으로 얘기를 합니다. 반면 우리 시간과 공간에 제한이 있는 비디오, 영화 자막이라든가 다큐멘테이션 번역을 어떻게 하는 게 좋아요? 그럴 경우에는 자국화 번역 전략, 다시 얘기하면 이런 컨버션 같은 번역 전략을 사용하는 것이 더 좋다고들 얘기를 합니다. 자, 예를 들어 봅시다. This is another documentary text of history of flight입니다. 자, 그렇다면, 자, 자, 요거를 우리 벤츠 마차, would you please read it? Mm. Mm. So this is one option. So, Mahunya, oh, uh, uh, can you read the Korean? Mm. Mm. So you can see, wow, this is a synthetically similar. The, Eng the Korean translation is a synthetically similar to English uh, syntax. Is it good? Or bad? Oh, it depends on the text type. For example, if this is a literary literature text, it is good. It's okay. But if this is the uh, te uh, text for the documentary and movie subtitle, it's not okay. 그러면 what is a good translation for the um, so? So this is modulation. Modulation is translate from the different point of view. Example, if there is a little water in the water what bottle, then is, we have learned in the school that 
있죠? 리틀일 경우에 그리고 얼리틀일 경우에는 병이 조금 있다 그렇게 배웠죠? 어. 그러나 물이 아직은 조금 남아있다 이런 식으로 만약에 번역 If you translate this way, that is modulation yeah. uh, You change the viewpoint of looking at the situation 자, 자 예를 들어서 이거예요 People would treat you with respect If you literally translate, 사람들은 너를 존경심을 갖고 대할 것이다. That would be the faithful to the own English text. But if you, you can translate this way, 사람들이 함부로 대하지 않을 겁니다. The people will not treat you rudely. So this is different. So this is modulation. Now, let's get back to our the previous sentences here. So, this is the example of foreign, uh, foreign musician. 이국화. 이국화 전략 쓰면 이렇게 됩니다. It's a faithful to English sentences. 그러나, we have, a, um, this is the example. That this is the example you use the 자국화. Um. In another word, 자, 한국말로 좀더 자연스럽게 들리기 쉽다. 이럴 경우는 자국화 전략을 쓰는 거야. 그래서 자국화 전략을 써서 만약에 번역을 하면 이렇게 번역이 돼요. 자, 이거를 우리 주영이가 읽어볼까? 한국말? 음, this is example of domestication strategy예요. 그래서 you can see the English syntax has changed in a way to fit the Korean uh, syntax. Uh, uh. 그래서 money and success, that was the subject, but it changed it into. <clears throat> so you can see how the conversion was made is here. Then English, the syntax is basically, there are several. <clears throat> Yeah, these are the examples of English basic syntax. Korean is usually, this is Korean syntax. So if you see the SVO, you change it. You change it. You change it. SOV. You change it. You change it. You change it. You change it. If you use the conversion, the English object becomes the subject. The English subject becomes the object. So this is the change of the conversion of the original, original language syntax into the target language syntax. So that we call the conversion. So if you use the conversion strategy for translating from this English sentence to Korean, then, uh, we, then we have a different version of a translation. So if you hear this one, it's much easier to understand for Koreans. But we have a question. It is always good to sound fluent 아니라는 겁니다. It depends. If that is the documentation, this is better. However, if that is the literature work, then this one is better. Mm, this one is better. Mm. Even if it sounds foreign, it should sound foreign. If you read English novel, mm. Korean, is, Korean readers would expect their English, uh, the translated text of English novel to sound foreign, mm. to sound alien. Mm. That would be more appealing for Korean leaders. So we need, we, we want to experience something alien and something foreign when we are reading English novels. But how about documentation? Documentation, which is more important. So they must understand quickly. They must, um, must uh, get the message as quickly as possible and as easily as possible. That's why they need to tra translation strategy like modulation, 변조, or conversion, 치환. So avoid the non-human subject. For example, if you translate from Korean and English, then one, one thing is you must avoid non-human subject because uh, let's read uh, the example. 자, 누가 읽어볼까요? 영어를 우리 저 헤라스, 헤라이스 말타? 헤라이스 말타. 음. 
Mm. So we have two different versions. So, 명주환, 맞어? 어, 지연이 오늘 안 왔구나. 그러면, 민주? 응. 두 번째는? 응. 민주. Which one sounds more fluent? 응? First one and second one. And second one is, uh, uh. and the first one is why it doesn't sound, sound fluent? 역사는 했기 때문에. In Korean syntax, the 역사는 non-human project, 역사. 게으름, 성공. This is non-human subject. It's very strange for Korean syntax to use non-human subject. If you translate this way, the translator decided to be faithful to the English syntax. So getting back to our main topic of text reliability, we also consider NIDA who talked about formal equivalence, 그쵸? 형태적 등가 versus dynamic equivalence is 역동적 등가. So NIDA is a very famous translate, um, translation theory scholar. Then he was very serious about Bible translation. He talked about formal equivalence and dynamic equivalence when you are translating. Mm. For example, if it is white, if it, it is as white as snow, but if you say this one to someone in some Africa or some Southeast Asia who has never seen the snow in their country, then how would you translate it? Mm. They have never seen the snow in their lifetime. So in this case, you can use it is as white as swan or white bird something so you can replace the snow with something that the local people can understand. That is a formal equivalent. Dynam mm. The formal equivalence will be, they just say, uh, if they choose to establish the formal equivalence, they would translate it as it is, as white as snow. But if they decided to establish a dynamic is equivalence, they would translate it as white as swan. 예를 들어서 이제 적도 이제 아열대 지방에 사는 사람들은 눈을 본 적이 없어요. 그래서 성경에 만약에 눈과 같이 희다 이럴 경우에는 두 가지 선택이 있다는 거야. 형태적인 등가를 세우기로 한다면 그냥 그대로 as wide as snow로 하는 겁니다. 그러나 역동적인 등가를 세우기로 결정을 한다면 이거를 snow 대신에 그 사람들이 이해할 수 있는 다른 메타포를 쓴다는 거죠. 수완이라든가 white bird라든가 이게 바로 역동적인 등가. 세우는, 어, 세우는 경우입니다. 그렇다면 dynamic equivalence then would it be okay if we translate lamb of the Lord into the seal of the Lord? 자 그렇다면 이 어린 양 하나님의 어린 양이란 말 this is a biblical expression 그러면 if you want I want to I want to establish the dynamic equivalence that 역동적인 등가를 세우겠다. 그래서 the lamb, so if we translate for the people who have never seen the lamb, then how would you translate lamb? 그 물개, 물개로, in some countries, they would easily understand if you use the seal, 물개. Alaska, if that is translated for people in Alaska, maybe translator may try to translate into the seal. Is it okay? Mm. 자 그렇다면 알라스카 사람한테 성경을 번역할 때 어린 하나님의 어린 양을 이 램을 이 사람들은 이해를 못해요. 알라스카 사람들은 they do not understand what the lamb is. They have never seen it. Uh, I'm talking about 100 years ago now. Of course they know now. 그러나 이 나이다는 한, 한 60년 전 사람이다. 나이다 used to live 50 or 60 years ago. So at that time, uh, the Alaska people, they didn't understand what the lamb is. Mm. Is it okay to translate the lamb into seal? Is it okay? Why? Because there is a reason you cannot translate it into seal. Why? Because the lamb itself is a message in the Bible. We cannot change the message. 그래서 this shows one example. Yes, it's good. Sometimes you can use dynamic. 
equivalence. Sometimes you can choose the formal equivalence, but there is one condition. What is it? Whatever strategy you can use, you cannot change the message. In this case, the name itself is the message, very important message uh, in the Bible. The so lamb itself is a very it's kind of a symbol of innocence, symbol of good faith, and the very purity. And lamb is a, a symbol of a, uh, Jesus Christ who died on the cross. So we cannot sacrifice his meaning. It's just for the convenience of target language people. So the major issue in the Bible translation is a translation should be more or less literal. So, and also how closely the form of the source language are reflected in the translation and how much translation adapts the source text to sound natural or fluent in the target language. So in the next, in the, in the week, in week 12, we will be following the trail of the translation a Bible translation, and the, the, there is a reason for us to try to follow the Bible translation. These are the main topics of a Bible translation. And also, this is the topic, major topic for today's translation theory, translation strategy. 자, 우리가 Bible trail을 이제 12주에 할 건데, 그 하는 이유가 있어요. 자, 성경 번역은 지난 2000년 동안에 계속 진행되면서, 이게 바로 메인 주제예요. 성경 번역하면서 매일 고민했던 게 바로 이거예요. 우리 성경의 원문에 좀더 충실해야 되느냐, 아니면 우리 읽는 사람들한테 좀더잘 익혀야 되느냐, 그럼 소스 텍스트의 문법 구조에 좀더 다가가야 되느냐, 아니면 읽는 사람들이 편안하게 쉽게 이해할 수 있도록 번역돼야 되느냐, 이게 항상 주요 이슈였거든. 그러니까 우리가 성경 번역의 트레이를 2000년의 역사를 거슬러 올라가면, 아, 이게 바로 바로 성, 우리의 번역의 전략에 핵심 주제가 되는 게 이런 거구나를 알 수가 있어요. 자, 그래서 우리가 어떻게 하면 어댑트란 말이 나죠. 소스 랭귀지를 어떻게 하면 내추럴 아니면 후원하게 될 것이냐. 자, 근데 여기는 there is a 어, 어, 리미트가 있다는 거예요. 항상 제한이 있다는 거예요. 자, 그래서 자, Night and Table Proposed Dynamic Equivalence uh, uh, Translation 자, 그렇다면 우리가 what, how is the way that how to Establish the dynamic equivalence. There are three process. Uh, I already said this one on the week two. You can immediately examine source text. Uh, you must study. You must fully understand. 그 다음에 뽑아내는 거야. You must extract its meaning. What is this message? 뽑아내고 그 다음에 forget about the original language. Uh, 그리고 나서 transfer 이전하는 거예요. Meaning the you know, the the transfer meaning into target language. So this is the typical way of forming the dynamic equivalence that NIDA and the TIGO proposed. 자, 그래서 항상 중요한 것, the first thing is you should be trapped with the original language syntax나 original language uh, form에 uh, you should be trapped 해야 된다는 거예요. But I'm talking about it depends on the text type. 있죠. Uh, if you if you if you are translating a literature work, you should be very careful to keep to follow the English syntax. Kerana uh, the Naidan, I think that that would be very good if you're translating the movie uh, subtitle or documentary. I think that uh, that wraps up uh, the our the module three class. So we will continue next class. Then we will take a 10 minute break. Then after 10 minute break, then we will, um, uh, we will do the um, translation practice number two. That is about MDG. First of all, we should know what is MDG. MDG is an indicator. MDG. It's about economic indicator. So it is about MDG in Africa. So the topic is, is it really a right measurement of progress in Africa? So Africa is a that is the topic. Uh, it is useful to, 
to fairly measure the progress of economy in Africa. 자, 그렇다면, so let's talk about progress. So there are two ways to achieve progress in a certain country's economy. 경제 성장을 측정하기 위해서 경제 성장의 진보, 발전을 측정하는 두 가지의 방법이 있어요. 하나는 두 가지 기준이 있어. There are two criteria to measure the economic progress of a certain country. One is poverty reduction. 빈곤 감소. 자, the other is economic growth. 경제 성장. There are two criteria. These are the two criteria to measure the economic progress of a certain country. Then we have the question: What is the what is the major criteria of measuring the economic progress in Africa in case of MDG? 그렇다면 MDG의 경우는 아프리카의 경제 성장을 어떤 기준으로 측정하느냐? The problem is it's only focused on 그죠? poverty reduction. 빈곤 감소. 빈곤 감소. 그래서 there is a problem. If you tend to focus too much on the poverty production as a crisis to measure the economic Progress. There is a full any some problem. Uh, let's take an example. Let's compare with uh, like Europe and Africa. So you can compare them. That is the poverty level. 빈곤, 빈곤 정도, 그죠? So you can, of course, the poverty level must be much higher in Africa than other countries. Then that of the European countries. 그렇죠? 그래서, so, <clears throat> but the, what is the MDG goal? MDG goal is to reduce the poverty by 50%. 자, MDG 목표는 뭐냐? 아프리카의 경제, 음, 빈곤 경제, 이거를, they, they want, they want to reduce, they, they want uh, the criteria is to reduce the poverty level of Africa by 50%. Oh. Then the problem is, the goal is the poverty reduction of 50%. Yeah. What is the problem? In order to make it sustainable, oh. in order to make the goal sustainable, oh. what kind of economic growth they need? 그렇다면 어떤 경제 성장은 필요할 걸까? 자, at least, <웃음> at least, African, uh, African economic growth should be at least 7%. 7 어, 어떻게 하기 위해서? If you, mind, if, you, if, you, if you want the poverty reduction goal of 50% sustainable. 빈곤 감소 비율 50%를 이주기 위해서는 적어도 경제 성장이 어떻게 되는 되는 거야? 7% 돼야 된다는 소리죠. Then how about Europe? If there is no mention about European countries, just assume if they, if you want poverty level maybe 50%, then if you if you want this goal of a poverty reduction of 50% sustainable, just maybe one or two percent of economic growth will be enough. Yeah. For example, I'm not talking about, the text is not talking about that. So this is the picture. So in Africa case, so in order to meet the target, MDG target of reducing poverty level by 50%, they must achieve economic growth of at least 7%. Yeah. But how about the last few years? What was the economic growth of Africa countries? It was usually 5%. So the 5% economic growth is a great success if that was achieved in Europe or Asia, uh, Europe or in the United States. But the 5% was a really success if that was happened in the European countries. But how about Africa? Even though they achieved economic growth of 5%, 
if you measure it by using this MDG indicator, it was a failure. Why? Because MDG is focused on the poverty reduction goal. So conclusion, if you use the MDG goal for reducing the poverty level in Africa, then it's African economic growth, which it was really success, but they are turning the success into a failure. In other words, then if you use the MDG, they underestimate the economic growth of Africa. So that's my uh, background uh, information about this test. So I'm going to give, uh, this is a little bit challenging for you to paraphrase Korean students. I'd like to paraphrase, uh, paraphrase is too challenging. I, would, I, I wouldn't ask you, instead, just one thing. Just a summary translation into Korean mm, for Korean students, just one. Mm. And how about international students? International students, it could be AA paraphrase. If the English is a native tongue or like a baker, then it will be AA paraphrase. If, you, if your mother tongue is a Spanish like Marta, then you can, trans, you, know, you can do the BP paraphrase. Okay, so each student have five or seven minutes, so uh, let's get started with the individual work.